we're going to take a quick look at um, some things you can do to supplement uh, spyware removal and to combat virus infections on local machines. I'm sure you guys all have your favorite tools. Um, you know, some of you probably use Adaware. Some of us like uh, Yahoo's free tools. Um, you know, some of us like to use Spybot or Norton's tools. Um, you know, some tools work in certain ways, and some tools are better than others. Some tools work in other ways. No tool is perfect. No tool finds everything and cures everything and solves all the problems. I, I have not yet found a best tool, but this would supplement that. So one of the first things we'll look at um, that viruses may do to your system is infect the configuration files. And one of the ones that is very vulnerable would be the host file. We're going to go to System32, inside of Windows, Drivers, ETC. We're going to open your host file. And we want to look at Notepad. It's plain text and Notepad. This is a loopback. Notice how it maps. Let me go here. And I'll use the ping command. And that's where localhost comes from. In this case, my host name, as you can see, is cgermanyxp. But 127001, the loopback, maps out to localhost. Clear the screen there. Um, DNS resolution, or name resolution, f goes in this order. First of all, your system will look in what's called the local resolver cache. So this is my, I'm going to use the command ipconfig display DNS. It will display my local resolver cache. And this will show you all, it just contains within it or maps all of the A records that where it's resolved the host name to an IP address. Um, so then if it doesn't find anything there, it'll go and check the host file. And then if it doesn't find that name entry there, then it'll actually go out and query a DNS server to do an iterative or recursive query on that DNS server. Um, so one of the things that your spyware, your viruses will do is they'll infect this file. And so by default, let me let me load up Yahoo here and I'll show you what happens. All right, this is my my front page. I know Google's a better search engine, but I just kind of like Yahoo for the flavor or something. I don't know. I you know I, I like my coffee without sugar and extra cream. How do you like your coffee? But in this case, that's our default web page. Now, if I were to ping Yahoo. Actually, let me flush my resolver cache, and I'll show you the entry. So I'll flush my resolver cache, and I'll display my resolver. Okay, so now there are no entries in my resolver cache. I'm going to do this. I'm going to ping www.yahoo.com. It'll query the DNS server the first time. Now it stores it in its local resolver cache. And the IP address is 69147114210. And if I display the resolver cache, now you can see what's actually inside my resolver cache. It's got Yahoo's A record locked in there. So what your Spyro will do a lot though, um, they'll make use of this host file and they'll infect it. And let's come up with a naughty address. So how about really naughty stuff? And okay, really naughty stuff. Here's some really weird stuff. Really weird stuff dot com. And we don't actually want to go to a bad evil pornographic site, but we'll just pretend that this is a really evil bad pornographic site. And it may be, I don't know, but uh let's not go there. Okay. So I've got the domain name. Now I'm gonna use my DNS server to query. Try to go out and find a top level uh, DNS server from IANA and resolve the IP address. I want to find the IP address for reallyweirdstuff.com. So ping and put the domain name in there. So now I know that the IP address is 207-217-12550. I'm going to mark it and I'm going to go over here and so say you get some evil yucky spyware or virus. One of the things it'll do is it can infect your IONI files and config files, but a lot of times it'll go to your host file when you get something that hijacks the browser. It'll take this IP address and it'll associate it with your home page. And it might associate other IP addresses with Google. So let's take um I'll associate that with Google. 
And we'll even associate that with Microsoft. We'll associate all that with Microsoft. So all that could be saved in the host file. And we'll close our host file there. Unbeknownst to us, we've been infected with horrible, evil, yucky, disgusting spyware. Now let's check that out. If I were to, let me clear my resolver cache real quick, which would be done if you rebooted your machine, but... Oh, IP config, ne? All right, I'm gonna clear my resolver cache and I want to display it. Now notice that I have these entries preloaded, but they're all the wrong addresses. And that's what that evil spyware has done to our system. So what happens if I tried to reach out and touch somebody? Let's say I wanted to go to Microsoft.com. Well, instead of going, I mean, it looks like I'm, I'm getting echo replies, but it's not Microsoft.com. It's that bogus entry in my host file. So what happens? I'm still mapped to go to Yahoo.com. You know, I load up my web browser and look, all of a sudden, hmm, what's going on? Yahoo's gone, hmm. Let me go to Google. Uh, what's going on? Oh no, oh no, heaven forbid. Hmm, can't reach Yahoo, can't reach Google. Maybe I can go to Microsoft and get some advice from TechNet. Ah, can't go anywhere. Hmm, but what if I go to this website? Astalavista.com. Now see, there's no bogus host file entry, so I can go to this website. So a telltale sign of this infection, or this type of exploit against your system, would be that you can go to some websites, but you can't go to others, or that your browser seems to be continuously hijacked to one web page or another. Um, way to fix it? Again, I would check the host file of a, of, you know, a, a system that you suspect is infected. See if you don't find some bogus entries there. If you do, just get rid of them. You need the local host, but that's it. This is what a normal host file should look like. No other entries there. So you would have to save it in the host file. Now remember, it's not enough to just do that. Once you've saved the host file, you also have to IP config and then flush your DNS cache. And I would also recommend using this command, ARP, and you want to delete your ARP cache. And once you've done that, then you should be fine. So now we'll ping www.yahoo.com. And behold, lo and behold, there it is. 69147114210. It works again. And we will close this and go back. And behold, there's Yahoo. It's back again. And go to Google. Behold. Oh, well, I misspelled it. Brings up the topic of phishing, doesn't it? Using common, commonly misspelled domain names or websites to do things. But now Google's back. There's our good friend Google. And now even our, you know, Microsoft is back. We'll affectionately call Microsoft Big Daddy. Yay! So that's one potential problem and solution or resolution to an infected system. Now, in addition to your host file, your LM host file, this is LM host SAM, so we're safe. It's not actually being employed. But sometimes people, uh, unlike the host file, which maps an IP address, uh, a host name to an IP address, um, an LM host file maps a NetBIOS name to an IP address. And this is not being used, it's got the .sam extension, but were you to remove that, then it would be being used. And you could also fill this up with bogus entries. And that would be another example of an infected system.